Hi, everybody. This is Christy Giannone back in week four for MPA 593 professional presentation. This week, we're continuing to take a look at the type of job we've been interested in researching and particularly incorporating body language tips for interviews. So I have been focusing on the position of human resources manager. These are the three resources that I found that had some helpful information that helped me to gather the five body language tips that I'll be presenting on my next slide. So this first one is from Forbes. The second one is from the HR Daily, which is a human resources blog. And the last one is from SHRM, which is a great resource for human resources professionals. And all of three of them had um, various different body language tips that I found that would be very relevant to this position. So the five body language tips that I wanted to share that I believe would help master um, body language for this particular interview, both in person and online, are listed here. The first one is something that we'll see likely in any of the resources that we're taking a look at, eye contact. I think this is very important, not only in an in-person setting, but virtually. This helps to let the people know that you're speaking with, that you're engaged, that you're actively listening. And this is something that we have actually had individuals tell us, um, like Dr. S was saying, everyone may have challenges that prevent them from being able to participate in direct eye contact. We have seen this with some learning disabilities. So I think in those cases, I think being genuine, being upfront, if you're comfortable and able to, is important so that we can avoid these next one of mixed messages. Um, this is something that was listed in one of the articles that I found that was saying if you have various different crossed arms, if you're fidgeting, if you're not maintaining that eye contact, if you're slouching, any mix of these different things can give mixed messages to individuals. So as a human resources professional, you're really there to build trust, to be genuine, to be a point of contact for the administrators that you're working for and the employees that you're serving. So you want to make sure that you are a person that comes off as trustworthy, and that's going to come across in an interview. Uh, the third one that I found very interesting and very important is this international perspective. It's important to keep cultural differences in mind. Body language is not a universal language. Just as phrases, words have different meanings in different cultures, so do different body movements, gestures, and signals. So it's something to keep in mind, especially as a human resources professional, we are in charge of ensuring that DEI is incorporated into the workplace. Um, that's diversity, equity, and inclusion. So you wanna make sure that that's coming across in an interview as well. Small gestures of engagement, this can be nodding your head, signaling that you're listening to the individual. If you're sitting on an interview and there's a panel of individuals, you want to make sure that you're maintaining eye contact and paying attention to all of the individuals, not just the one that's um, asking the question, because everybody is going to be rating you, seeing how your responses are. So you want to make sure that you're maintaining those gestures of engagement. And then again, like eye contact posture is going to be one that we will likely see in any of the resources. It, again, um, signals to the individuals that you're speaking with that you are engaged in the conversation, that you are finding this interview to be important, that you're sitting upright. And again, like the eye contact and like Dr. S said, if this is something that's not possible for an individual, I think having those genuine conversations um, up front before you start your interview with HR on the side, there's always a, an area to ask for accommodation. So if you're unable to do this, I think being genuine and upfront can avoid those mixed message signals. All right. And one additional tip that I know from experience that might help others interview for this position and other positions is do what works for you. I am a person that talks wildly with their hands. I am doing it right now. It's very funny. I wish you could see. Um, so that can be distracting, especially in a council meeting presentation and virtual interviews. I want to ensure that my hands are not blocking my face, that they're not distracting from the information, information that I'm trying to to provide and my responses to these questions. So for me, I hold a pen. You know, if I'm on a virtual interview and you can't see my hands, I like to hold a pen down at my side. That helps my mind to focus on where my hands are and avoid any kind of um, gestures that could be distracting to the, the people who are conducting the interview. I've also done a penny if I'm at a council meeting. It's a little smaller, a little easier to hold. Um, but this is just a tip that worked for me. And I think it's a very personal and individualized experience. So once you get feedback from from an interview on maybe how your body language wasn't incorporating what they were looking for, you can figure out what works for you. 
Thank you for listening once again to my presentation. I hope you all have a blessed week and I look forward to listening to yours.